Now, there have been worries and complaints for months about Trump, but this was the last straw. Listen here, just before meeting an actress in Hollywood. I'm going to use some Tic Tacs just in case I start kissing her. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the <laughs> I can do anything. Uh, Trump initially brushed off that tape as just locker room talk between boys. Yeah, he did. Then after hours of urgent meetings with his inner circle and a revolt across the party, a new statement released just after midnight Saturday. I've said and done things I regret, and the words released today on this more than a decade-old video are one of them. Anyone who knows me knows these words don't reflect who I am. Now, if Trump were in his 20s, maybe the decade-old thing might actually matter some. But he was 59 at the time, 59. And the comments aren't just crude. They treat criminal behavior against women as a sport. You could hear him there, and you could go online and listen to all of it. As for the statement that these words don't reflect who I am, well, we went through the tape library. The record might suggest otherwise. They said, how are you going to change the pageant? I said, I'm going to get the bathing suits to be smaller and the heels to be higher. I view a, a person who's flat-chested is very hard to be a 10. Uh. Okay. I've been with women with extraordinarily bad breast jobs. You could see there was blood coming out of her eyes, uh, blood coming out of her wherever. Simple question. Can Donald Trump make the case that that's not who I am? No. No. <laughs> <Right>? yeah. no. <laughs> Uh, it's, well, let me think about that. Yeah. No. And, and you know, he tried to do well. This was part of my inter the entertainment portion of my life, and I was just joking with my good buddy uh, Howard Stern. Uh, but in this example, right? I mean, he's this is him just talking and joking around uh, with B Billy Bush. So I think the entertainment excuse uh, doesn't fly anymore. But I also think this. I mean, in talking to some diehard Trump supporters, uh, they have been in the trenches with him. Uh, all this time, uh, and I don't think this is going to move them at all. And in fact, one lady I talked to in New Hampshire, she feels more energized for him now than she did before. But I, I was actually in, in Colorado earlier this week hiking with uh, white suburban women, right, who are yeah. going to be the key factor, uh, college educated, in this election. And so many of them uh, were ready to accept, you know, past statements of his as show business, but there was so much frustration uh, that they hadn't heard anything in the way of real issues, real discussion of, of plans in this campaign. And you just have to think that, you know, after after the you have this tape come out and we're now just talking about this, I mean, those women who are looking for something different from Trump, this is just going to be the only subject we're talking about yeah. for yeah. another week. And, and I think they're the getting, vacuous yeah. campaign. And, and they're very much getting a signal from prominent women uh, in Congress. There are six uh, GOP women senators. Uh, Five of them have essentially parted ways with Donald Trump, asking him uh, to, to leave the race, saying that they won't uh, support him. Uh, and those are the, the kind of women, uh, the Romney Republican women, uh, that in states like North Carolina, that Hillary Clinton thinks she has some inroads in. And this just, I think, uh, makes her case even stronger. Yeah, Nia, I think you're right that there are a lot of Trump supporters who will not be moved uh -huh. away from him because yeah. of this. And we've seen it time and time again. I mean, how many times have we overstated the impact of something he said or done that turned out not to be very significant? in terms of his level of support. Um, but as you know, as, as you made clear in going through the map, this is not a situation for him in which he simply has to hold what he's right. got. He's got to he's got to make up ground that he's been that been losing over the last several weeks. And that under these circumstances becomes enormously difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Defense, it's very, very hard now. to gain on defense. Yeah. Just before you jump in, I just want to show this from our latest poll. Trump already had a gender gap. Now, he does very well with men, although Hillary Clinton, after the first debate, did close that a little bit. But look here, uh, Clinton 53, Trump 40. Uh, Gary Johnson and Jill Stein getting 4% combined at the bottom. <laughs> but she already had a 13-point advantage among women likely voters. Uh, it's, it's safe to assume in the immediate aftermath of these tapes anyway that that's not going to get worse, and many think it could actually, for her, get better. Well, the interesting thing is, for all the talk about how unpredictable and dynamic the race is, Donald Trump has been stuck in just about the most narrow range of any modern candidate. He is between 38 and 43 percent. He doesn't really get beyond that. And what he needed to do, even during his, his best moment, his salad days of August, right, the guy did not push much past 42 or 43 percent. And the crossover aspect of this, 
the, the opportunity that he had in Hofstra, that really was the moment in this campaign where he could have expanded, and he just failed to do so because he didn't prepare. Our, our K-File team recently hired here, Barcino, was going through some other tape as well, again, to Donald Trump's point that this was an aberration. He and Billy Bush essentially in a motorhome looking out the windows, leering at women. Uh, okay, gentlemen, uh, that's how we do that. But listen to this tape. This is another Howard Stern moment where Donald Trump is not only talking insensitively about women, uh, this is his daughter he's talking about. By the way, your daughter, she's beautiful. A can I say this? A piece of yeah. The last couple of years I go out with somebody and she's like 21 and she's talking about, you know, what are you doing? She's studying algebra. And, <laughs> so um, what? And it's like, it was always embarrassing for me to walk in. It's too young. 30 is like a perfect age. Absolutely. She had enough life experience. Until she's 35. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's, that's too, much, too much life experience. Yeah, 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 yeah. What is it at 35, Howard? It's called checkout time. Um, what is it at 35, Howard? It's called checkout time. That's Donald Trump's view of women. But early on in that interview, Howard Stern says, is it okay if I call your daughter a piece of, I'm not going to say the word on a Sunday morning, and Donald Trump says, yeah. I mean, the other person that we've heard, you know, total silence from over this weekend is uh, is Ivanka Trump. I mean, what, it's, it's What can great. she say? She well, did an nothing, interview nothing. She did an interview with Nora O'Donnell, yeah. CBS News, not that long ago, where she said, my father's not a groper. Right. Right. Now there's a tape of her father bragging about being a groper. Right. And I mean, she was one of his most effective surrogates among women. She was the one who was crafting his uh, child care, elder care plans. And, you know, she has tried so hard to, you know, make the case that she's a political independent. Uh, that she, you know, that, that that she can support her father because of the policies that he is behind. And I mean, I just think there's no, there's no way for her to come out and yeah. stay clean in this. Yeah, and she, of course, is trying to maintain her brand, right, right and grow her brand. She sells uh, sixty dollars dresses in TJ Maxx, uh, and so that's that's something she's shoes. trying to do. She's shoes, uh, yeah. and she's done these direct-to-camera ads uh, about her father. But I mean, you hear that. I mean, every single time, it sounds disgusting and deplorable and awful. Another big question. Melania Trump issued a statement yesterday saying what her husband said on that tape was offensive, but that she had accepted his apology, and she hopes the American people accept his apology. It would be very interesting to see whether she's here with him tonight.